All right, so why would Tulsi Gabbard supporters uh, end up going back to vote for Donald Trump? Because some of Tulsi's supporters uh, were Donald Trump voters in the year 2016. They didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, they liked uh, Donald Trump's anti-war rhetoric. Um, and again, we can, we can debate a little bit about um, how many troops have actually left Afghanistan and left uh, places like Iraq and so forth. Um, it is kind of minuscule. And if you're going to start to really split hairs on this, you're going to find that you, you don't like what you find out. So I'm not going to look. Um, it is very courageous, though, to stand up and say about generals that these these people would go to war and that um, if it was up to them, they'd go to war. I mean, that is something I've never heard a sitting president say. And then again, with Trump, that happens pretty much every day. But that's something I kind of like. And, um, you know, remember the Queen of Warmongers uh, comment or tweet, which is still <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard's number one tweet of all time. People love that tweet because it was her uh, basically speaking truth to power, somebody who I believe is very evil. And, um, and I'm talking about Hillary Clinton, by the way. I, the, there's nothing redeeming about Hillary or Bill Clinton at this phase. Um, connecting things like Jeffrey Epstein and um, being very against Julian Assange and so forth. There's so many things... <sighs> that even if you're on the left or the right, you should be completely um, just repulsed by the Clintons and so forth. And so that was an easy target. That was low-hanging fruit uh, by Tulsi Gabbard when she put out that tweet. But I think a lot of supporters of Tulsi enjoy somebody who's a strong leader. And Trump, even if you don't like what Trump stands for, he is a stronger leader than a guy like Joe Biden, all right? And I, I can't imagine Tulsi supporters going over to Joe Biden to vote. Um, if you're a peace-loving candidate, which of the two presidential candidates is really trying to, to quell these riots? Now, I think Tulsi Gabbard would be highly effective, though, in a way that Donald Trump isn't. And this is one of the reasons I... Uh, looked at her campaign is because Tulsi Gabbard would say, look, these riots are a bad idea. Um, violence of any kind is bad. Um, and really use the bully pulpit to speak to the violence in these cities and get specific. And not just call the rioters out, but just call everybody out and call for uh, cooler heads to, pre to prevail. And coming from Tulsi Gabbard, I think people would listen. And I think Tulsi would also acknowledge that some of these so-called peaceful protests aren't all that peaceful. Some of them are, you know, to some of my former progressive friends who say they're all peaceful. I, they're not all peaceful and you really have to come to grips with it. You know, you had somebody get shot in cold blood up in Portland, all right? And I saw the video, so, and yeah, I know cops do things. I, I know the whole spectrum, but to say the protests are only peaceful is crazy. It's lunacy. And I want somebody to come in and basically call out everything that needs to be called, called out, be an equal opportunity offender. and. If you're looking for some of that, there's more of it with Trump than there is with Biden. Um, it, but, you know, as I'm talking through this, nobody is uh, is, is diplomatic as Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, and one of the reasons I like Tulsi Gabbard, even if I don't agree with her on a lot of issues, I think she would be good for the country. I think she would bring factions together. Donald Trump is very polarizing. And people who voted for Trump and felt a little bit guilty, a little bit dirty that they voted for Trump, 
thinking, wow, I can get somebody who is still going to be tough in certain ways and still stand up to uh, a lot of the power brokers in this country, including the military industrial complex. Trump has done a good job standing. Has he gotten a lot of policy? Has he gotten a lot of troops to come home? This is the, the debate that he talks about. He wants to do, he wants to do, he wants to do. For those of you who wanted him to build a wall, he's building a wall, but it's nowhere near complete and so forth. So, you know, you can't say that he finished the wall or Mexico is paying for it. You can't say any of that. He, you know, he contends that they still will pay for it. I know they're providing some security at the border, which is kind of a new thing. Um, but, you know, security against their own people. <laughs> drug cartels protecting Americans from their own drug cartels. Uh, and again, if we would just stop the drug war, you wouldn't have to do that. Look, our country's in rough shape. It's in rough shape. We have to have a balance between civil liberties and safety. And we don't have that. We have panic. And you need somebody to, to turn the violence down and to turn the volume down and Trump isn't going to do that. And Biden, quite frankly, if he can get through a sentence, he ain't going to do it because his speechwriters are going to throw out the red meat, you know, and say silly things. Contrary to, contrary to what Trump is saying about stuff, Trump is not the cause of the stuff that is coming from the left. He's not the cause. Trump, if anything, uh, has been restrained in some ways, not with rhetoric, but with actions. Uh, he did some stuff up in Portland briefly, had the feds go in there and so forth, and a lot of libertarian-minded people did not like that whatsoever. I can understand their concern, but you're getting to a point, I think, where the citizens are going to start to beg for security over their own freedom. And that's a dangerous thing because the more you do that, the more you do that, the less freedom you're going to have in the end, regardless who becomes the president. Because once they see you doing that, they're going to know that uh, more control is needed. It's necessary to keep these people under control. And who better to administer that than the big bad federal government uh, to bring in you know, the heavy duty artillery and to start to, you know, calm things down. Um, we'll see how far that goes because even someone like myself, if I see, you know, property being destroyed after a while, I'm going to say, somebody needs to come and stop this. And it depends how far we get there. But again, you know, as far as Tulsi Gabbard is concerned and her role uh, as a future president, if she were to be the president, um, if things were different and we had a party system that allowed candidates with different views to actually be heard from, Tulsi Gabbard could easily be the president because she's imminently qualified to be the president of the United States. And again, you look at somebody's resume, I mean, you may have disagreed with a certain president, um, like Eisenhower, but he had credentials. Same thing with JFK. Um, military service is a good thing. Uh, it equips you for just all kinds of unexpected things, and it gives you a true perspective as to what our military deals with every day. So with that said, um, I do believe Trump is closer to Tulsi than Biden is. But some people will say, well, Tulsi's a Democrat, Biden's a Democrat. I don't see any similarities between Tulsi and Biden at all. There's zero. Um, and maybe there aren't that many with Trump, but um, I do believe that, let me put it this way. I do believe Trump likes the country, and I think Tulsi likes the country. You may say, well, I think Biden likes the country too, but a lot of the people who support Biden do not like the country. And I think you need to like where you live. You need to look for some redeeming qualities and you need to kind of step out of your comfort zone and stop talking to your echo chamber. And I think a lot of people just do that instinctively because 
It's like, you know, freedom of association. Well, I'd rather associate with these people. It's like Twitter. I will just block you after a while. If you are, you know, what's the point of arguing? I will just block you. Arguing is not good for your soul. It's really bad. I mean, you can reason for a while, but if it's going nowhere, I would say pull the plug, try something different, uh, get a Gab account or something, get a, a parlor account and, you know, get away from the toxicity. Tulsi Gabbard was the anti-toxicity candidate and that's what made her special. And that's what made her great. Even if you didn't agree with her on everything, you were thinking, okay, I could wake up in the morning and disagree with Tulsi and still like her and still be happy that she's the president of the United States. I think that's the big difference. Um, as far as my independent uh, hopes and dreams like Joe Jorgensen, unless we change the way the media functions in this country, um, third party candidates will always lose and they'll lose big because they're not getting exposure. And even if the two parties are really bad, the people continue to feast on the lesser of two evils or they don't vote. And that's a shame because if they knew they had an alternative, they might try the alternative and that alternative movement would begin to build. And I think that would be really good for the country. You know, if you believe in free markets, right, you should believe in free voting like free market voting, uh, lots of choices, no duopolies, but it's basically a uh, communist style uh, voting system. It really, it really is because you've got these two choices and they're kind of two sides of the same coin. And in order to be heard, you have to join one of the sides of the coin like Tulsi Gabbard did to get heard. Trump too, he's not a traditional Republican at all. And he had to join that side in order to be heard. So you kind of sell your soul and it doesn't get much better from there. Once you get elected, it all goes downhill from there. So thanks for watching the channel. If you can keep subscribed, please do so if you haven't done so. Uh, I'm thinking after the election, I'm going to, um, again, maybe mess around with the channel where uh, the Tulsi content is important to a lot of people who... Uh, are still kind of holding on hope that Tulsi will do something in the future. And uh, who knows, I'll hold on hope too. I just, I don't think you can reform the Democratic Party. And this will be an ongoing battle. And maybe, you know, once they see another failure, and I hate to say it, if Trump wins, then what do the Democrats have to show for themselves at that point? With all of this just nonstop, four years of antagonizing Donald Trump, it's, it's a bad idea. We could have gotten so much done instead of wasting all this time. But they didn't want Trump to win again. They didn't want Trump to get any credit. And they wanted people just to hate him for being above ground. And I don't think that's healthy. I think we need to go back to peace, all right? And peace at home, peace abroad, peace between each other, even peace between warring factions of uh, ideologically opposed individuals. Yep, we need to do it. Otherwise, we're not going to survive. All right, that's it from here. I will be back soon. Thanks for watching.